What's going on, my good people? Mike Hidalgo here. Thank you for joining us on another FCPRO DIY. Today, we're gonna to be working on a 2006 BMW 330i. Today on the three series behind me, we're gonna be doing a radiator replacement. This DIY is gonna be applicable to all your E9X models, your 325s, your 328s, your 330s, as well as the all-wheel drives equipped with an N52 and a manual transmission, as well as your 2009 to 2011 BMW Z4 with the same 3-liter N52. We are going to be using our OE bare Mala radiator, as well as two jugs of genuine BMW coolant. These are concentrated, so you can dilute them with some distilled water, and you get two gallons out of each. Typically, some things to look for, and the main reason these are changed is cracking. They crack, the plastic end tanks fail, they separate themselves from the aluminum body, and they start leaking. Other times, just due to heat cycles, they tend to crack around where the hose connects. And oftentimes, in extreme cases, if you're running the incorrect coolant in your vehicle, the channels in here will clog up over time, leading to inefficient cooling system and overheating, high temps, all that bad stuff. The vehicle behind us has a crack, so we're gonna try to actually pressure test the system and show you where exactly it has failed. But before we get started on this DIY, let's take a look at some of the tools we're gonna need for this job. For this job, we're gonna need a few basic tools, starting with a small quarter inch ratchet, a small extension, a pick, you can sub out a small flathead screwdriver for that, a 22 millimeter socket, I'm using that strictly for the drain petcock on the radiator, you can use some pliers instead a 10, an 8, and a 7 millimeter socket. The 7 is gonna be for me for the hose clamps. You can use a flathead screwdriver. And we have a T20 and a T25 as well. And then some nice to haves, but not required, depending on the job you're doing, is a pressure tester kit. I'm using the Pittsburgh one. Number 22 cap is gonna be what's gonna to attach to the expansion tank on the E90. A small flashlight, an impact tool just to speed up the removal of all our hardware. And if your aim is bad like mine, a small funnel always comes in handy. Now we know what kind of tools we'll be working with. Let's get started on this DIY. All right, baby, we are under the hood of the E90. We're gonna start by removing our air box and this front duct. Two reasons for that is so that we can pressure test the system and have a full view of both ends of the radiator. We suspect that the leak is coming from the driver's side. There is a little bit of pulling on the splash shield. If we can't see it from up above, we'll put the car up in the air, we'll remove the shield, and we'll see if we can find the crack from underneath. So. To get started, we have two 10 millimeter bolts that we're gonna remove on the end of our air box. I'm just gonna zap them off with the gun. This should be able to just pull off from our air box. This we're just gonna go ahead and set to the side. And then on the air box side of things, we have our mass airflow sensor we have to disconnect and we have our intake boot, so let's do that. Next, we're gonna go ahead and disconnect our mass airflow sensor. Usually there's a clip holding these to the uh, body itself, they always break. I've never seen an N52 with an intact connector. So we're just gonna go ahead and pull this off. And then at this point, you can use a flathead screwdriver to undo the hose clamp. I'm gonna use a small seven millimeter socket and an extension just to zap it off quickly. Should be good. And now it's just a matter of pulling our air box out. Beautiful. With our airbox out, we have a whole view of where the radiator hose, the upper here on the driver's side, and we can get some light in here. Uh, we'll show you in a little bit, but you can see the pooling at the bottom of the belly pin. It's always better to say than just to assume, but you always wanna do this with the vehicle being stone cold. You never wanna work on a hot cooling system, especially because if you undo the cap, it's gonna be under pressure. You don't want it to spew everywhere, get a mess, make a mess burn you, so it goes without saying, cold cooling system is the way to go. All right, at this point, we're gonna go ahead and undo our expansion tank cap. If this is the first time you're getting to it and you're opening it up, you're not sure there's any pressure left, open it very slowly. All right, my good people, we are under the E90. We're gonna start by removing our splash shield so we can access our drain plug on the radiator. Now, as you know, this has a lot of coolant in the splash shield. It's been leaking for about two weeks on poor Steve. So I'm gonna start by removing the eight millimeter hardware on the back of the shield first, so I can maybe open it and catch some of it in my catch pan versus bathing myself in all the coolant. Uh, there's about 14 or so eight millimeter bolts on here that hold the shield up. We're missing a couple, so don't hold me to that number. But eight millimeter socket, I'm just gonna zap them off, uh, starting from the back to the front in this case. 
And there you go. With that off, we're going to go ahead and set this to the side, clean up a little bit of the mess in here, and then we'll get to draining our coolant. With the splash shield out of the way, we have another smaller one to remove so we can access the petcock on the radiator. You have two 10 millimeter bolts that hold that into place. They also hold the bracket for the main splash shield. So just remember these two come off with that. And then this just comes down. You're supposed to have a little locking tab like it does there on both sides. Obviously this one's broken. You can see there's a gaping hole that's missing, but that holds that into place. So. Let me grab a uh, tool to open up this petcock. We'll set up our catch pan and let's drain, baby. All right, now to get the petcock out, you can use a big flathead, you can use a pair of pliers. I happen to have a 22 millimeter socket that fits perfectly over this. So it shouldn't be more than hand tight. Let's see if we can avoid taking too much of a bath. I'm just gonna let the plug drop with the coolant. Right now, all I'm doing my good people is I'm just squeezing one of the radiator hoses just to get kind of what's left in this radiator out. Since we're working on the lift, normally I would do this job if I'm working at home on the ground. I'd have a catch pan under here at all times, so when I undo my radiator hoses, anything that falls off will be caught by the pan. But because we're working on the lift, this big catch container that we have obviously won't fit down there, so I am gonna try to avoid some spillage by doing the spillage now with my catch pan. All right, I'm just gonna put the old petcock back in. That way when I pull this old radiator out, that's one less opening I have to worry about extra spillage coming from. And again, if you want to use a socket like I did, it's a 22 mil. And if you're tightening this at home on a new radiator or you just simply are doing a drain and fill, literally hand tight is all you need. Just plastic going into plastic. Now we're going to grab our two brackets and our splash shield that go under there. You have this front lip that keys into this support behind the front bumper cover. All right, now we can grab our two 10 millimeter bolts along with our brackets. With that on, we can grab our main splash shield, our eight millimeter bolts and slap that puppy back up. All right, my good people, I'm putting my shield back on. If you're following along at home, you can go ahead and skip this step if you wanna A, drain some more of the fluid or work on other parts of the car. We're pretty confident that the hoses are not gonna leak. Famous last words. Only because we replaced them not too long ago. It was a premature failure on that radiator, so. We're gonna slap this cover back on, grab our eight millimeter socket, and put the 14 eight millimeter bolts back in. Let's go ahead and get this car back down on the ground and pull this old broken radiator out. All right, my good people, at this point, we're gonna start disconnecting a couple coolant hoses. So we're gonna start by removing our expansion tank hose, and we're gonna follow that all the way down to our upper radiator hose and remove a couple of things there. So let's get started with that. First, we're gonna start by removing this middle clip on our expansion tank line. Go ahead and pull that off. And from there, we're gonna follow it and unclip it from our fan shroud. I'm gonna continue by removing this hose clamp on here using that same seven millimeter socket. A flathead screwdriver will work absolutely fine on that. We'll set this hose to the side. While I have you here, we're gonna disconnect this electrical connector that goes to our fans. You have a tab on the top and a tab on the bottom. Just push them on either end. That should come right off. Then from there, we're gonna go ahead and disconnect this upper radiator hose at the same time. I'm using the same small pick. You can use a flathead screwdriver. You can use whatever you can jam up in here. Pull up on that to unlock it. Sometimes these get a little stuck. As I mentioned earlier, this car does have newer radiator hoses. We just did them last year. So these O-rings should still be in good shape, but sometimes when you pull off these original lines, the O-rings are toasted, they're wasted. If you go to put it back on, you have a potential leak coming in your future. That can just live there for now. We have our lower line and a fan switch to disconnect, and then we can work on removing this fan shroud. I'm gonna go ahead and press on the electrical connector clip and pull it out. Beautiful, set that to the side. All right, from there, we're gonna go ahead and remove this T25 screw. Before you go ahead and pull the fan out, you do have two clips, one on either end that hold it against the radiator. Usually you can use your finger and pry them forward and then lift up. And you have the same one on the driver's side as well. Same thing, you can see this one's already out before we even touched it, but you would pry on this and pull it forward. Just like that. 
With both of those clips undone on either end, we can go ahead and pull up this fan shroud. With the fan shroud out, we have a way better view of our lower radiator hose clip. So let's grab our pick and pull that off as well. All right, I'm gonna grab that same pick tool I was using to pull up this metal clip. You gotta be careful in pulling this off. Obviously, I'm being a little aggressive on this hose. I'm not too worried about the radiator breaking anymore. It's already broken, but you wanna keep in mind that should you be pulling this off an original unit, that has a greater chance of cracking just due to the age of old brittle plastic. With that off, now all we have to, left to do is remove two more Torx bolts and we can pull this old grimy radiator out. All right, we have a T25 located underneath the radiator support right here that we have to remove. We have one on each side. So I have a T25 on my quarter inch ratchet. And now let's head over to the other side and do the same. And we have our other T25 located right there above where the upper radiator hose connects. With both of our T25s removed, we should be able to now pull this radiator forward and pull it up. To give you an idea, again, a better view, this was exactly where our radiator was leaking from, right here, and it was just dripping down. Let me clean up our work area, and then we'll get our new radiator ready for install. We have our new radiator ready to go. Our area is cleaned up. We're gonna go ahead and install this. Same way we took it out, the top kind of a uh, little slanted towards the engine, the lower half towards the AC condenser. You'll see there's a little tab on either side of the radiator. You can probably see it on your old one as well. There's a small slot that it keys into on the uh, radiator support. Just be mindful of that when it goes in. You'll be able to tell if it's nice and flush, you did it right. If it's uh, completely poking out, then you might want to check your job one more time. So let's go ahead and get this in there. There we go. Another way you can tell to make sure your radiator engaged properly at the bottom is to simply grab it and try to pull it out. If it doesn't move, then you're fully locked in. Now let's grab our two T25s and secure it to the rest of the vehicle. We're gonna go ahead and feed our T25 on our driver's side. It's nice and snug, it's plastic, going into plastic, no more than seven Newton meters if you really wanna torque things down. Let's do the other side. While well, I have you on the passenger side, we're gonna go ahead and reinstall the lower radiator hose. Once it feels right, we can go ahead and grab our fan shroud and get ready to drop that in. Now we're gonna go ahead and feed our fan shroud back in. So just like we did before, we're gonna kind of guide it through the wiring on the passenger side and just move that upper radiator hose out of our way. We should be able to pop it right in. And similar to what I showed you during removal, you have your two alignment guides, clips, little wings, call them what you will. These are gonna key back into our new radiator just like the old one was, so let's get to it. That looks good, that looks good. You also wanna make sure these three, or two on this case, two little uh, hooks also grab onto the lip of the radiator right up top. So you don't wanna miss that. That'll make sure that, that'll help you align everything as it goes in and it'll keep everything nice and secure. With that there, while I have you on this side, we can go ahead and reconnect our upper radiator hose again. You want to make sure it's fully seated in. You don't want to see the neck of the radiator with the, um, they look like little tic-tac pills, but part of the structure where it clips into. Make sure that's covered in. Slide that clip back down. We can also go ahead and reconnect our electrical connector while we're here. Satisfying click. And you also want to make sure the wiring gets tucked in back in this little harness clip. With this clipped in, we can go ahead and head over to the passenger side now and reconnect our fan switch. So let's do that. Beautiful. There used to be a little plastic connector that held the wiring here. I'm gonna small, grab a small zip tie and just line it back up so this doesn't fly around. Give me one moment. Now with that zip tied and out of the way, but quite literally in our way, you wanna be careful. You can see how this wire is run. Someone pinched this in the past. It's got a really nice flat spot on it. Just be mindful of that whenever you're installing screws and hardware in your electrical harnesses. Now we can go ahead and reinstall our expansion tank line. So let's do that. We can go ahead and clip it into our tank up top. Press that clip down. Then we can go ahead and feed it onto the upper radiator hose nipple. And then once that's situated, we can go ahead feed it back into these metal clips. 
sorry, they're plastic, plastic clips holding in a plastic hose. And don't forget to tighten down the clamp up here by the ro ra upper radiator hose. Beautiful. At this point, our cooling system itself is buttoned up. This would be a great time if you still have that pressure tester tool to repressurize the system, make sure there's no leaks in your new connections or your new radiator. So I'm gonna go ahead and just do that for peace of mind to A, make sure our new radiator is healthy and B, to make sure that our O-rings didn't get pinched or anything when we were reconnecting our radiator hoses. So give me two minutes, we'll do that and then we'll start uh, adding the rest of our intake box back in and then we'll bleed the system. All right, now we're gonna go ahead and put our air filter box back in. So let's go ahead and wrap that up so that we can bleed this cooling system. I'm gonna take my paper towel out that I put in here. You may have seen that earlier, just so nothing would fall in or decide to find a new home. We're gonna go ahead and put this clamp on first just to make sure that gets seated properly. And again, I'm using the same seven millimeter socket on the gun for the hose clamp. Absolutely overkill, but feel free to use a flathead screwdriver for this. If you've lost your hose clamping, you need to know what size hose clamp you need. A 100 millimeter hose clamp will work for this. While I have you down there, we're gonna reconnect our mass airflow sensor as well. Next, we're gonna reinstall our two 10 millimeter screws. If you're gonna to torque these, 10 to 15 Newton meters will do. From there, we can feed our last piece of ducting back in. That clips onto there. And then these two, you have two T20, T20s that sandwich through the radiator support. Let's get ready for that. Now we have our ducting back in, all our hardware's back in, everything's buttoned up. The last and most important step is to fill up the system with coolant and bleed it. So let's get ready to do that. All right, let's get to filling. We're gonna go ahead and use a funnel just because my aim is terrible. I'm gonna start with pouring in half a jug of concentrated BMW coolant, which then I'll follow up with half a jug of distilled water. Once we add about half a jug of both, we're gonna go ahead and take a look at the level. And then if need to, we'll start the bleeding procedure. And if not, we'll keep topping off as needed. I'm gonna let it bleed for a little bit. I can hear all the air bubbles escaping. Once it quiets down, then I'll follow up with uh, the same amount of distilled water. Now that it's stopped bubbling, we're gonna go ahead and follow up with some distilled water. Let that do its thing for a moment. So what I did was, since I had about half a jug of the concentrated coolant left, I went ahead and topped it off with water back to the full mark. That way I know I had exactly half a jug of water in here, half a jug in my other jug. We're still shy of being full. Uh, one thing I want to note, this car specifically does have a broken uh, fill needle or fill gauge, whatever you want to call it. There should be another nub sticking up here about a quarter inch. So the idea is that when the first nub, which is this one here, is level with the top of where the cap goes, then that means that the system's full. So we still have a little bit more to go. I'm gonna to top it off just a hair more, and then we'll start bleeding the system. That's about where we want it. Just for bleeding purposes, we can always top off more if we need to. For now, I'm just gonna rest the cap on top of the expansion tank, just so that stuff doesn't splash when the bleeding procedure starts. Now let's hop inside the car for a hot second and show you how to initiate that. All right, my good people, we are in the E90. To do the bleeding procedure, it's very simple. You're gonna take your key, put it in the ignition, hit the start button once without your feet on any of the pedals. You're gonna set your heat to high, as in temperature-wise, so we're gonna set ours to 84. And we're gonna leave it on the lowest fan setting. The idea is that the heater block is opening so that everything can circulate through the heater core. From there, you're gonna step on the accelerator pedal and hold it down for about 10 seconds or until you hear the water pump kick on. Once that kicks on, you're gonna let it run for about 10 minutes or so. It's very important to know a couple things while you do this. One, the door must remain open. The second you close it, it's gonna cancel the procedure. And two, this car literally just got a brand new battery, so we're not too worried about the voltage. However, BMW does recommend you put some sort of tender on it or charge it beforehand. This one is quite literally new. We're not too worried about that today, but just keep that in mind, especially if you have an old or weak battery. We'll catch you in a few minutes while we let this thing bleed. So we're gonna go ahead and top it off as it's going through the bleeding procedure. We're gonna go ahead and put our cap back on to wrap up this DIY. And there you have it, my good people. Another DIY in the books. Overall, a pretty straightforward job. 
on this E90. Again, applicable to all N52 E9X cars, all wheel drive and rear wheel drive with a manual transmission. If you like this DIY, please be sure to give it a thumbs up. If you have any questions or comments on what we did today, leave them in the comment box below. And if you like this DIY and you want to see more like them, please consider subscribing. We make new ones all the time. As always, thank you for watching. We'll catch you in the next one.